we are drafting Marvel superheroes into the NFL. Now, if you missed the first part of this, you can find the link to picks one through 10 somewhere by my giant head if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not, you can probably find it linked below or somewhere in my bio. Now I lay out the ground rules thoroughly in that video, but as a quick refresher, we are taking this seriously. For example, Scarlet Witch has the ability to manipulate probabilities and alter reality, which would certainly come in handy on an NFL field. But unfortunately for her, the NFL does not allow those things. So she would probably be flagged if not suspended. And I know Roger Goodell would likely risk pissing Wanda off if he did suspend her and risk suffering a John Krasinski Reed Richards multiverse of madness sort of fate, but that's a discussion for a different day. Also, as a reminder, we're only drafting characters from the Marvel 616 universe. So someone like Spider-Gwen, who is not from 616, but does interact with characters from the 616 universe, would not be draft eligible. Oh, and if your team does not have a first round pick, in this case, that would be Cleveland, Carolina, and Houston. I will assign them a player after Kansas City picks at number 32, because that is the kind of guy I am. Now enough about me. We have a draft to continue. With the 11th pick in the NFL 616 draft, the Minnesota Vikings select quarterback Clint Barton, a.k.a. Hawkeye. Now, I know there are a lot of superpowered beings still on the board, but Hawkeye has the athleticism to get yards on the ground and would be deadly accurate in the passing game. Just imagine what Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson can do with a guy who puts the ball where it needs to be every single time. And with the 12th pick in the NFL 616 draft, the Denver Broncos select quarterback Pietro Maximoff, a.k.a. Quicksilver. The man is fast, and Sean Payton desperately needs a quarterback who can score him some points so he can keep pretending he is a genius and not just some dude who happened to reap the benefits of having Drew Brees. And scoring points for Denver might come in handy because you just never know when their defense might give up 70 points again. Now we're going on to the 13th pick, and it's just fitting that the Raiders would have the lucky 13th pick, isn't it? Anyway, with the 13th pick in the NFL 616 draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select quarterback Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. Black Widow. She's an expert marksman, a tactical genius. She is in peak physical condition, and she's also a hell of a leader. It, maybe it's the color, but just her in a Raiders uniform it seems like it was meant to be. And with the 14th pick in the NFL 616 draft, the New Orleans Saints select offensive tackle Ben Grimm. The thing. The Saints need offensive line help, and this guy has held his own against the Hulk, which in my opinion is all you need on your resume to warrant first-round draft capital. With the 15th pick in the NFL 616 draft, the Indianapolis Colts select tight end Luke Cage, a.k.a. Power Man. I went tight end here because I believe if Brock Bowers were to fall to Indianapolis in this spot, they would scoop him right up. And don't kid yourself, Luke Cage would be the best tight end we've ever seen. Superhuman strength, durability, stamina, and he has unbreakable skin. I mean, come on. Not to mention, his moral code is at the top of the food chain, making him an ideal role model for little Colts fans everywhere. Now I am going to speed things up with the remaining picks because I could very easily turn this into a four-hour video. With pick 16, the Seattle Seahawks take quarterback Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool. Healing factor, marksmanship, funny as hell, and because of this pick, I am sure the world will see an influx of new Seahawks fans. And with pick 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars select cornerback Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil. Very simply put, his radar sense alone will help coin the phrase Murdock Island. At pick 18, the Cincinnati Bengals select running back James Howlett, a.k.a. Logan, a.k.a. Wolverine. Adamantium skeleton, healing factor. He also likes the cold, need I say more? At pick 19, the Los Angeles Rams select defensive tackle Beta Ray Bill. Strength, durability, healing factor, heightened senses. He might just be the next best thing to Aaron Donald. At pick 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers select wide receiver Prince Namor, the Submariner. Big, strong, fast, and he is one of the few heroes who can match Mike Tomlin scowl for scowl. They sniped the Miami Dolphins on that pick, by the way, whose aquatic theme would have made Namor a perfect match, but I digress. So at pick 21, the Miami Dolphins decide to go a different route, and they go defensive end Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk. She's also an attorney, which could come in handy when Dolphins owner Stephen Ross inevitably gets caught for cheating again. At pick 22, the Philadelphia Eagles select offensive tackle Hyperion. Strong like Superman with, to put it lightly, a bit of a mean streak. <laughs> Let's face it, he fits Philadelphia like a glove. At pick 23, unless Minnesota has traded away this pick, the Minnesota Vikings select cornerback 
Tommy Shepard, a.k.a. Speed. Sure, he's a little young, but when you can lock down every receiver on the opposing offense at the same time, I don't think age matters. Just try not to hurt him, because if you do, his mom, Wanda, will do this to you. At pick 24, the Dallas Cowboys select linebacker Eddie Brock venom because of this draft the giants wide receiver one is now peter parker so this feels like a very jerry jones thing to do plus venom also does not trigger parker's spidey sense so yeah at pick 25 the green bay packers select the top offensive tackle on the board walter lankowski aka sasquatch man is a brilliant scientist and he's powerful and he loves the chilly north so this just seems perfect for lambo at pick 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select defensive end Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, a.k.a. the Red Hulk. He has the strength of a Hulk and is not at all bothered by the heat. This just seemed like the perfect fit for a Central Florida football team in need of someone who can get to the quarterback. At pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals also go defensive end and they select Dax the Destroyer. Enhanced speed, strength, and agility. Plus, he's also immortal, so unless they decide they can't pay him when his contract is up, they will never need to draft another defensive end again. At pick 28, the Buffalo Bills select wide receiver Miles Morales, a.k.a. Spider-Man. So New York football gets a second friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And if you want to know why this would benefit Buffalo, just see the Giants pick in the part one video and apply everything I said there to this pick. Quick footnote, I know Miles Morales is not technically from 616, but he has become a prominent character in the 616 universe since 2015's Secret Wars by Jonathan Hickman, which I strongly urge you read if you haven't done so already. At pick 29, the Detroit Lions select cornerback Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier. Enhanced speed, strength, and agility, and he also just seems like a Dan Campbell sort of guy, doesn't he? At pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens select offensive tackle Simon Williams, Wonder Man. Not only is he exceptionally strong, but he also doesn't age, and he has enhanced sensory perception, which just seems like something that would come in handy in the NFL. At pick 31, the San Francisco 49ers select wide receiver Peter Quill, Star-Lord. Great leader, quick reflexes, heightened speed, strength, and durability, which is huge for San Francisco. Plus, he has quick wit and a charming personality, so he'll probably be in a crap ton of commercials the way Baker Mayfield was a few years ago. And at pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs select wide receiver Mark Spector, a.k.a. Moon Knight. Again, enhanced speed, strength, and agility, plus a healing factor. Plus his abilities are enhanced by the phases of the moon, which could be an added bonus during primetime games. That ends the first round. Now, I did promise we would cover the teams that did not have a first-round pick, and we're going to do that right now. Now, keep in mind, we are keeping this as realistic as possible, so we are going to approach these picks as if the team's position before these picks have selected already. So the player pool has dwindled down somewhat but not for the carolina panthers who own the 33rd pick finally some good news for panthers fans that feels a little weird anyway with the 33rd pick the carolina panthers select defensive end adam brashier the blue marvel by the way this pick in the second round is the steal of the draft as far as i'm concerned blue marvel is not only one of the most powerful characters in the entire marvel universe but he also has genius level intellect. You're welcome, Carolina fans. You guys do deserve nice things once in a while, but I'm sure your owner will figure out a way to ruin this somehow. With the 42nd pick in the NFL 616 draft, the Houston Texans select strong safety, the Asgardian known as Valkyrie. Master strategist, superhuman abilities, and also has a mystical connection with death and the afterlife, which in my opinion is well worth the draft capital alone. And finally, with the 54th pick in the NFL 616 draft, the Cleveland Browns select running back Eugene Judd, a.k.a. Puck. A bowling ball of a man who has everything you would ever want in a running back. Power, speed, agility, and with his healing factor, he would clearly be in every down back. And bonus, he's also immortal, so he would not hit that 28-year-old age cliff that Nick Chubb is about to hit. Between Cleveland taking him and Cincinnati taking Wolverine, the state of Ohio is going to have the best running game we have ever seen in the NFL. This is exciting. That concludes the NFL 616 draft. Tell me what draft you guys want to see next. We can do Marvel villains. We can do DC heroes. We can do DC villains. We could do horror movie villains, though. I'm not sure how that would work, but hey, if you guys want to see it, I'll do it. Do not forget to subscribe and like this video. Oh, and before you go, I want you to remember...